howdy. So we're gonna go over Necros. I need to quit opening my videos with so, but oh well. So <laughs> Necros, I've been trying to make a build work on him for a while now, the past like week or so. I've been testing him a lot. I've put like 30 hours in testing out a bunch of different stuff on him. I really wanted to make him work in Void Cascade, like a level cap run. I got to like level 5,000 and then I had to pull out because I just couldn't sustain my energy. It was way too rough. But I think you could make it work, or at least for what I was going for, it's just the energy sustain takes a lot of effort. So Necros is an actually fairly decent frame and he doesn't get as much credit as he should for Shadows of the Dead being able to resurrect enemies as your allies. Because, like I've stated before, and other people have stated as well, enemy damage scales way, way higher than enemy health does. Like, health sort of plateaus, I think that's the right word, at like level 3000, I think. I'm probably wrong about that, but it kind of like levels out. Whereas the armor just keeps going up, and more importantly, the damage does. Like, enemies start doing hundreds of millions of damage in a single shot. So when you're resurrecting an enemy that's, like, level 9,000, they do really, really big damage. So if you're armor stripping, you're, the allies that you... Re or the enemies that you resurrect to be your allies are going to completely decimate the enemies that they're killing. It's going to do big, big damage. Really, really good. It's just... It's only good when you're facing several thousand levels of enemies. So it's hard to tell on the low end. And I know most people don't play level cap or endurance to the point they're facing enemies anywhere above level 1000. So they don't really get to see the damage that it can do, which is unfortunate. Hopefully they change that in the future, but for now, that's what we have to deal with. You can build into it, and there's actually a video by As an Invasions, one of my favorite YouTubers to watch, where he makes a build of using it it's actually a build that somebody else made like a year prior and then he updated it and changed it i i think so and so that's a really good build and it maximizes the damage your necros can do on his four but it takes a lot of efforts first of all and secondly it's you don't really need that much damage once you get to a high enough point when the enemy level that there it just it ends up being overkill if you go far enough that is now my biggest problem with necros other than his energy was his survivability because well that kind of ties into the energy as well because we can spam terrify to shield gate but holy shit does it cost a lot of energy when you start spamming it 75 is insane and Almost any content, you are going to be totally fine on energy. So we have the spoil, so that Desecrate consumes health instead of energy per corpse that it loots. And that was Equilibrium. So if, if you didn't know, the spoil, I, it prioritizes health orbs over just about everything else when it makes extra drops on enemies. So there are health orbs galore. That means with Equilibrium, your energy is just insane. You're never going to run out of energy. But that's assuming you're killing enemies regularly. And in something like Void Cascade, there's not enough enemies that you're regularly killing when you're running around and trying to get all the points or whatever before the Thrax take them over. So that's why I was having energy problems. But outside of Void Cascade, you'll be fine on energy in pretty much anything in the game. As long as you keep your Desecrate active and you have Despoil with Equilibrium. Energizes here just because I was struggling with energy on Void Cascade, but you very much do not need it in other stuff. I have Stretch because that gives just enough range for Terrify to not feel terrible, and it helps Desecrates, and it also helps our helmet, which we are going for Gloom. Because Gloom gives us slow, and we're also getting slow from Creeping Terrify, so we have a lot of slow going on. And it also gives us lifesteal, which counteracts the health that we lose from desecrate looting corpses. So we never have to worry about running out of health. Then our strength is at 154 right now. I do have one Archon Shard for 10% ability strength. You don't need that. It just makes it easier because you do need Mole Augmented here. I don't know why I have Aegis on. That's supposed to be Mole Augmented. 
So with Augmented, you can build up your strength, and at 168, I think it is, you can full strip in a single cast of Terrify, which is what we want. And that's also going to increase the slow effect from Gloom and the damage and tankiness of your shadows. So that's quite nice. Strength is very good here. Like I said, four Catalyzing Shields, Brief Respite, so that a single cast of Terrify without any efficiency will be able to give us full shields. You could go for efficiency, like if you decide you didn't want as much slow... You could put Streamline instead of Creeping Terrify. That is an option here. That might even be the better play, but most of the time I don't feel like I need energy in non-Void Cascade missions. So having the extra slow... Sorry, I've been up a long time. Having the extra slow can be really nice. Prime Flow, because he definitely needs the extra energy since his abilities cost so much to cast at, in a at once, like, even if you have unlimited energy, if you're casting too fast, you're going to run out if you don't have a big energy pool. Continuity for duration, and then strength from Umbral Intensify. If you're not running Energize, since, like I said, you don't need it, if you're not in Cascade, you can run really anything else you want. It just could work for survivability, or Molta Vigor, if you wanted to snapshot some strength onto your shadows or something, or Gloom, that also works. But yeah, I like Gloom here because, like I said, it counteracts the health loss from A3 and it just gives more crowd control. So we have, we're have we slowing in armor stripping and terrifying like scary enemies around with our 2. We're slowing with our 1, and we're making a bunch of shadows with our 4, which will attack enemies and aggro them so that we don't get hit as often. Giving us a fair bit of crowd control to help keep us from dying. Now, Necros, his biggest downside is holy shit that casting speed like watch oh, i will have to kill some enemies first and then i can show you his force absolutely atrocious casting speed because it it is really quite bad to say the least so we will go ahead and kill some enemies here just decimate them because i was testing something earlier so they're already armor stripped so watch it look That was like five seconds for a single cast. That is horrible. Now, if you're already at the shadow cap and you cast again, it will summon them to you and heal them. And it's not nearly as long. It's like half or less than half the, the duration for the cast. But it's still not great. And if even one of them dies, you're going to have to do the full cast over again. Terrify itself also has a pretty long cast. So does Desecrate if you end up getting nullified and you have to recast it, as well as Gloom. Which is why Casting Speed is nice on him. You could try to shove Natural Talent into the build. Casting Speed Shards are the best way to do it instead. Or, what I have been doing is I just run Matterize so that I get Power Transfer. Right here for 50% extra Casting Speed because it makes it so much better. Honestly, you can do this with Casting Speed Shards. You can't really overkill on Casting Speed for Necros because of how terrible it is. So he's quite good having all of the extra crowd control and he gives extra orbs for your teammates as well. Like, not just the loot. The extra loot is nice if you're, like, resource farming. But the health orbs will also affect your teammates. If they're running Equilibrium, they're going to have an ungodly amount of energy themselves as well. So he's got lots of crowd control, lots of support for his teammates by making all the orbs, and I think it also makes energy orbs drop more, and a full armor strip, which is quite nice. So he's a pretty good frame. I'm going to do another video on him in the future once I perfect my Void Cascade build and I, I take him to level cap at some point. But I just been, I'm, dude, I, I struggled so much with the energy. It was all fine until I bottomed out at one point and I just couldn't get it back. And that just ruined the run. It didn't help that it was me and my friend two manning it. And I'm not exactly a god when it comes to soloing Steel Path Void Cascade. So I usually run it with other people. So when only having two people definitely made things more rough because we could have had more kills going on, which would help me get more energy back and also make it so there's less enemies that I have to worry about killing by full stripping with my cast so I don't have to spam as often. So I think that would have made it a lot easier. But yeah, I'll make I'll make another video once I I perfect that build and I feel like I can show it off like in mission void cascade. 
right now this is just going over the build I'm using right now and I wanted to maybe hear some opinions on people like what they use with Necros. My other builds are this one which is exactly the same for the most part. I just got Rolling Guard instead of Creeping Terrify and then instead of Gloom I went Condemn since Condemn will help me get shields back so because it's cheaper than Terrify is and if I tag enemies I can get shields for my full shield gate. And it also gives a nice crowd control. And since it makes it easy to hit enemy heads, it also makes it easy to build up in Karnon, which is nice. Then this build is with Nourish. This is for if I do feel like I want to build into my Shadows of the Dead. Because I still I need to get my Theorem Arcanes back. I sold them. That's what you can use for making your Shadows do a ton of damage. Again, watch as an Invasions video on Necros. But Nourish, Nourish applies to any summoned allies as well. It, you won't be able to tell, but it does work. It affects your shadows as long as you cast it after you cast your shadows and they're close enough, and Nourish will apply to them. Now, their status chance is pretty horrendous, so they're not going to apply Viral very often, but they can apply Viral, and it gives them the damage bonus, the elemental damage bonus. So that will help increase their damage. And when they do apply Viral, that's also nice for even more damage. And then this is just, my Reap is just a farming build. So that's what I've got going on right now. I have a Chirinka Pillar build that I'm going to be trying out here pretty soon at some point. But if you have any ideas, let me know. If you like the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a dislike. If you want to see more low-quality content, subscribing would be awesome. We're almost at 100 subscribers, and it's been like a week and a half, which is pretty crazy. So thanks for enjoying the content, and adios.